So I'm going to say just a little bit about a few of Cambridge's um, road verges. And many uh, counties have a, a network of protected road verges, which were chosen often many years ago to represent the, the floristically best verges in the county. And for Cambridgeshire, they, the council has a rather neat um, web application that shows where the, the verges are, and indeed shows much more than just the protected road verges. It shows where all the permissive footpaths are as well. And that's something that doesn't appear on many maps. So it's, it's quite worthwhile having a look at some of these sites um, for the facilities that um, they show. Cambridgeshire actually covers administrative Cambridgeshire, which includes part of Huntingdonshire and a bit of North Essex, and in some cases shares a border um, with Suffolk. And it's always been an impression that they are suffering from a, a mix of poor management and nutrient emission uh, enrichment. Uh, and as Kate said, things are progressing in the right direction. Some of the verges are still in very good condition. And the one I've illustrated here um, shows both um, melon pine and crustatum, crested cow wheat, and sulfur clover, trifolium ochroleucon. And that's probably um, getting on for one of the best verges in the county. And really to investigate uh, what was going on, I used the DDB to search for locations that included PRV or RSV, which were often the abbreviations used to indicate one of these protected verges and analyzed them for um, the nitrogen content, um, the light and height preferences of the species present, and split that up into two uh, date groups and looked at what the changes were. And this did indeed show that there was a, a slight increase in nitrogen enrichment, uh, a slight but not significant decrease in the amount of light coming through, but a significant increase in height. And the latter was almost certainly due to um, quite a few verges having trees planted along them, because that's the popular thing to do these days. And obviously trees increases the amount of shading, which is not good for the, the meadow plants. The other thing is that for quite a few verges, new um, hedgerows have been planted on what was open countryside. And while that may protect them from spray drift, um, it doesn't improve the verges from the point of view of the flowers that were present. The length of the verges um, ranges from um, a few meters, as in the case of the one that um, Kate mentioned that protects the, the fen ragwort, Jacobea paludosa, near Ely, um, to several kilometers in length. And as a, a sort of general point, it's worth noting that in Cambridgeshire, most of the designated verges are in the southern half of the county, and there are relatively few in the northern part, which is the um, lowland Fenland. And in part that is because the diversity in Fenland um, is something of an exception, but equally it does mean that people who live in the north of the county don't have um, road verges that are on this protected condition. Uh, and I think it's probably worth reviewing um, what was set up 20 or more years ago, because the surrounding countryside has changed enormously in that intervening period. And just looking at what grows on some of these verges, um, here I've produced a table showing the top five species on the protected verges, 
and the top five species in the county as a whole. And it's very noticeable that the top species on the verges is quite a way down the county list. And the fifth equal is also even further down the list. Whereas the most common things, that's the nettles and dandelions and um, thistles and cleavers, are, are really um, much further down on the protected verge list. So that does show that um, they are indeed better parts of the countryside. One worrying feature for the, the future is the appearance of some invasive species. And for us, the one that I'm particularly drawing attention to is Smyrnium olocetrum, which used to be more of a coastal plant, but does seem to be popping up on more and more of our road verges. As Kate said, the verges can be the refuges for many threatened species. And here I've got some species that's on the Cambridgeshire Register of Plants of Conservation Concern. Um, these aren't necessarily rare plants, but many of them will have a threat status of, of one sort or another. And many of them have um, national threat statuses as well. And so in that sense, these protected verges are doing their job of providing refuges for protected species. And I'm going to finish with just a, a short comment on uh, a paper that you may have read in um, BSBI News in the, the latest uh, edition, uh, where Andy Amflett drew attention to the presence of Sagina maritima, a sea, or, sea pearlwort. And I noticed on his map that there was a notable concentration around Cambridge. And I think this is entirely due um, to the predilection of myself and my former co-recorder and now emeritus recorder, Alan Leslie, who really find walking along busy roads uh, quite an interesting experience in, in more ways than one. It's not just the 40 ton lorries hurtling past, um, but the range of different plant species that do find even the busiest roads um, of interest. So that was the distribution of Sagina maritima, the sea pearl word. Um, but uh, another cluster of plants uh, of curved hard grass, Parafolis incurva, also crops up around Cambridge and more or less everywhere else um, that is very much a, a coastal species. And then to conclude with a, a um, so a controversial idea, Bordium marinum, sea barley, is red listed as vulnerable in its native habitat, habitat uh, on the coast, but it does seem to like um, quite a few road verges, including um, those around Cambridge. And the question is, should these be designated as uh, protected road verges because they're supporting a population of an endangered species. And that's something to consider. It's not necessarily just the most wild flower rich verges that may be important. There are other ones as, too, uh, as well. So that was all I wanted to say in, in my short presentation. Um, if there are any questions that you'd uh, like to raise, um, do fire them off in the chat or raise a hand and I'll enable you. Just checking to make sure that I've not missed anything in the, the questions. Um, so Sa Sandy Knapp asks, is, is the presence of halophytes concentrated along roads from the coast? Um, certainly in the Cambridgeshire case, um, 
the, the two major ones that support halophytes are the A14 and the A11, which do indeed uh, lead to the coast. But the A505 and the, uh, the Bedford Road at the 60 something um, also have significant populations of, of halophytes. Um, although it has to be said that they branch off from these main trunk roads. So I think we can probably safely say it's the arterial roads that have high traffic flows that are, are likely to support the halophytes. So I, I do suggest um, going to have a look at some of these places with low traffic uh, around, or well, relatively low traffic. I'm not sure that everybody is sticking to the stay at home message. Um, the, the, the big roads are, are less frightening than they are at, at times. Uh, and also, um, I've lost the thread, uh, so I'm sorry about that. Um, also, they are actually, even though you have those big 40 ton trucks and hurtling backwards and forwards, I feel that they are much safer um, than some of the country lanes that are, are really winding, and yet motorists do travel along them at high speed, and there you have nowhere to jump. And um, Sandy has also suggested that um, with seed sources, an, an analogy to the roads is that the spread of um, weeds that initially came in with the, the railways, um, well, now the, the roads are doing pretty much the same thing. 